Hello! We finally got it working. If there are any problems with the video feed that you are receiving, by which I mean if you are having trouble and it slows down or anything like that, please let me know. I am trying a new setup. This is my first time trying to stream from the Nintendo Switch. So we will see how that goes. If you are in chat, please say hello. Please ask questions. You literally missed nothing except for me fussing about. The good news is that um, literally the start of the game is you waking up in like this sarcophagus. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I want to see one of the first things we want to do um, is we want to change our control modes. Pro. Aim with motion controls. We will turn that off. I'm not using the Joy-Con. I'm using the... Um, I'm using the Pro Controller right now. Uh, basic controls. Ability controls. How do I switch controls in this game? Jump is on the X button, which is just not cool. So let's... Let me bore you for a second and see if we can change any of that. Change jump button. This can, this changes it to um, the B button, which is like, oh, that's... I can't jump very well. Link can't do much stuff. Oh, look at him. He's not a very good jumper. Um, but here we will grab, as we have seen in previews, I think a lot of people have seen this sort of preview stuff. This is the Shika slate. Um, I'm playing on a big monitor. That or is a Sheikah slate. As big as it, it, you might consider it. it will and help guide you can you definitely tell that this slumber. is just kind of like 900 whatever P and not a full 1080p game, but it doesn't really matter to me too much because the way that the art style of this game kind of positions itself, it's kind of flowing and painterly. So I don't really mind any of that stuff. I do know the story of this game broadly. I do know the fastest way to get to the final boss. Um, right? I know a ton. Of, I know a ton of shit <laughs> um, because uh, I my job is to cover this sort of thing. Let's put some pants on. There we go. My job is to cover speedrunning, which meant that I have talked to plenty of speedrunners and all sorts of other stuff. Where I have seen, I have seen the final bosses of this game, and I have seen many of the story events. So unfortunately, my uh, my response will not be overly emotional or exciting. I will not cry, but I up will to the probably. There will still probably be some that really cool will stuff. Show you the way. Uh, for real, though, if there are video issues, I, I cannot tell. I cannot. I cannot check. So if there ends up being a problem, or if you don't care for the audio mixing. You need to communicate that to me um, because I have chat and everything, but I do not have some of the other things, unfortunately. So this will be good, though. I think I think this should be pretty darn good. And my phone just rang, <laughs> but we can probably ignore it safely. The Pro Controller is super nice, if anybody is curious, like, it feels good Link. in my hand. I like the shape. You are the it's light. offset control sticks, Our which light. I used to not be a fan that of. I really like the DualShock 4, once again. but now go. the more I've played with an Xbox Elite controller, and I think the more that I play with this, the more I think offset analog is probably the way to go. And then you would think that the stick is to sprint, it is not. Um, in fact, I'm not even clear what the sprint button is yet. I think it is... Yeah, it's my Y button, which is very, very strange. Um, or my X button. So the the layout of the buttons on this is there's a Y button to the left, an X above it, an A, and then a B. It's kind of like the Super Nintendo. Here we go, though, into the beautiful, beautiful world. The structure of this game, very loose, very exciting. 
I love it. It's very nice. Um, <laughs> I have, I, I, I technically have two copies of this game. I have a digital copy and I have a hard copy. There's a vote right now on my social media to see if people want me to eat. Or, well, rather lick, not eat. To lick the Nintendo cart. Sorry, my phone is going off. Okay, I know that was not the most exciting thing, but I needed to check my phone because it was ringing kind of incessantly. So, the game is pretty much guiding us where to go. We'll go talk to the old man. We don't have to. Uh, this is a plateau area. This is kind of like a tutorial area, though. So we do have to do some stuff here before we get to the actual ground in Hyrule. But we can come over here and talk to this fellow, whose identity I know. Unfortunately, he will spare us his life story. He is an old fool. I like having dialogue prompts. Um, I appreciate that most of the voice acting is in cutscenes only. Link does not have a voice, so do not fret. I like that you can move your camera around during interactions like this. It's kind of pretty, and I appreciate that. So we are on the Great Plateau. It is apparently the birthplace of the entire Kingdom of Hyrule. How exciting. And we will, we, we will be going around to a couple of shrines to get some powers. Mm. We need our powers before we can explore the rest of the world. Sorry, I hiccuped there for a moment. So he has sort of pushed us towards um, that. Let's grab this. That is a baked apple. Um, oh, they, they set me up for a little joke there. You little fucking sons of bitches. Um, the controls are inverted, oh. I think, so I might need to change that, too. Hmm. Oh, I have a torch. I didn't realize what was going on. Hmm. Uh, I can take his axe. I would love to take his axe. Um, press and hold for a lock-on. Uh, where is his axe? Okay, first off, I need to fix these fucking, this fucking camera shit, um, unfortunately. So how do I get back to my stuff here? System, options, their definition of invert might not be my definition of invert. No, it is. What? What is up with these camera controls? This is my only problem right now. Um, we want fast camera sensitivity. For whatever reason, that is so much better. Um, where is his axe? Where is this man's axe? I want it. Um, or, for now, I want these apples. I have a feeling that I will need these apples. Oh, his axe is right down there. Perfect. Look at this game giving us all the stuff we need. And then, when we want to switch things here. I think we hold this. It's a little different because it's showing the Joy-Con controllers. I'm not using a Joy-Con. I'm using the Pro Controller, which means it's done through a stick instead. So we can head over here and we can... <coughs> chop down the tree if we want, right? And if we want to, we can use physics to... Oh, what the hell? Someone's talking to me. Link. L I'm in the middle of something, lady. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. So to access my Sheikah Slate, I do this. This is, it's basically the map, right? It's very big, very cool stuff. So we're going to want to go here. Hopefully that will mark it on the map. I want to push this into the, into the water if I can. 
um, but it's in a very funny spot. That looks like a sword in the stone. So we are going to dive right into the water and go over there and try and pick up that sword in the stone. Because we would be fools not to. And just dive into that water. You can climb up a lot of shit in this game, like a ton, but you have to be careful because it will drain your stamina. Let's see, it's probably a nice little rusty sword, right? A rusty broadsword. Yeah, so let's equip that. Oh, I'm going straight into the normal menu. I don't have to do that. I can do it from here. I'm still learning some of those controls. That looks like something bombable for later on, which is a wonderful thing about the Zelda games, is that you can just keep track of all the shit that you can bomb and stuff and go back to it. The even better thing about this game is that we will... Well, so we'll, we'll progress pretty far. Um, I don't know how long I'll play tonight, right? I do want to get some footage because I do hope to do some sort of video on this game for early in the week. Um, largely because I am going to be in the middle for most of this weekend of a fairly intense and focused review process. Um, so there's my sword. Let's... Can I get the flurry? I'm gonna... F there's this thing you can do where you do a tempo flurry. I wonder if I can even trigger it yet. <laughs> no. I don't think so yet. We can just kind of hit him and then we can take his club for now. It's a lot of inventory management in this game. Unfortunately, I really, really wish that the left stick could be bound to running, but it cannot. Instead, I'm using what is basically the equivalent of the triangle button, which is just not, not a good feeling. And it makes kind of jumping and stuff a little odd, not exactly what I would hope it could be. Um, so the mini-map is something that we, you know, we might want to check every now and then, but I'm not going to really mess around with too much yet. We just want to get to the inside of the Temple of Time. I am very impressed by the way this game positions itself. Um, <laughs> Broadsword, pretty badly damaged, unfortunately. To throw our weapon, we would use it like that, and then we would release. Oh, that just <laughs> breaks my sword. Okay, that's fine. We can break this. Yeah. Look at how gorgeous this is. These ruins. Oh, there is a chest. I did just start. This is the very, very beginning of the game. Found a bow. Fantastic. To draw my bow, I just hit this arrow thing over here to put the bow away. I don't know what the button would be. Oh, it's the Y button. Well, it's the X button. I keep on calling it the Y button because I'm used to, like, Xbox and things, but it is. Boom, like that. Perfect. Getting used to these controls. Let us pray to the goddess, right? The goddess statue smiles upon you. Thank you, goddess. And then Sheikah Slate, we want to see where the next place we want to go is. Um, it's down near this way, by the looks of it. Right? Just kind of getting a sense of it. Sort of how these controls work. Oh, I can put my own stamps on the map, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, can I remove it? How do I remove this stamp? Cool. I'm learning how the map works, which is very, very nice. This is, um, this is gorgeous, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact, it is very, very gorgeous. I think for now, um, as much as I wanted to, because I'm streaming and I don't want to bother everybody's time and take too long, this will show us where our objective is, right? So that can be useful for us. And the trick is just getting to where we want to go. The sword on the map, I probably want to get rid of. So let's go back here again.
the where the, you would think the A button is is actually where the B button is. Is actually to cancel stuff, so that is fucking with me hardcore. Um, but hey, the good news is that I'm able to stream pretty well. Although, like I said, if there is trouble with any of the, uh, if there's any quality issues, please, please do not hesitate to tell me um, so that I can make sure that you get the best quality there is. Explosive barrels down there. There's a boulder there. How do we want to handle these guys? Right? They have food. I'm, I want to eat their. F I want to eat their food. Um, it seems like the right thing to do. Let's push the boulder. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Good job, Heather. And now we can take their giant big thing of steak. My last Nintendo game uh, system was indeed the Nintendo GameCube. I've never played a Wii. My sister has the Wii. I've never used it. My roommates in college had a Wii. I think I maybe... Well, never is the wrong word then. I think I played a little bit of the GoldenEye remake. Um, is the Switch something I decided to get for myself? Yes, this is a personal purchase. This is not something that work got for me. We have people at work who received Switches, but they were covering it. Uh, reviewers, people who were covering games. I, 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 my boss got one, and I believe... Jason got her. He was certainly provided with a copy of Breath of the Wild, because um, he was playing the heck out of it, from what I understand. And his review was very, very good as well, I should stress. I'm very fortunate to work with smart and enthusiastic co-workers. Um, to switch the bow is after I draw the bow. So there we go. We have the Boca bow. Oh, dude saw me. I thought I took care of him. Nice. Oh, that's not... I did not mean to take out the Sheikah Slate. Uh, oops. I meant to try and shoot this guy in the head. Well, that was a bad shot, and I'm out of arrows. So let us just sneak up and grab this guy. Um... A, a bokoblin fang. Cook it alongside a critter to make an elixir. Yeah, I was absolutely, um, I was definitely drawn to it. Uh, right? I, there's, uh, I, I definitely wanted to play this game. I wanted to play the shit out of this game. I, I think I have a lot of, uh, I think there's a lot of interesting things to consider in this game. And, but I haven't really gotten a chance to fuck around with the system yet. So, somebody in chat is asking if there's a performance dip when going into the handheld mode. I Believe it or not, I do not know yet, because I actually haven't used handheld mode. I've taken it out of the stand, the stand that you put it in, to, um, to hook it up to your television. I took it out once. It snaps very quickly, right? So, the, pretty much the moment that I took it out of that stand, it was working on the um, on the handheld, right? It's a little slower to read and get everything set up inside of your, um, inside of your, like, TV. Like, it takes a minute for the signal to get going, but it's, it's pretty fast. So I've I've really enjoyed it. So I mostly like I came home and I I s tried starting to download Zelda and when that failed I actually went around the corner and procured a copy of this game which I may or may not be licking tomorrow. Um depending on what on uh, what Twitter says. There's some, some nice little haptic feedback that's going on in the pro controller. It's very light. It's not anything major, which I'm kind of thankful for. I don't think I would enjoy, like, really excessive happiness. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Peep 
people, but I got plenty of people voting there. <laughs> um, to see if I can look at it or not. Yeah, no, I know you're not asking about anything like that. Um, yeah, so over 100 votes, that's... I don't do a lot of polls, so that, for me, that's pretty good. Shit, what the hell? I think it is the phone that I got, sorry. It was a very haphazard stream, kind of a last second thing. Uh, we'll, we'll kind of do some thoughts as things go along, but I've never really... You know, my thoughts right now are, boy, gosh, I want to play Zelda. So these are towers. Insofar as I understand them, they function very similar to the towers that you would encounter in many other open world games. Kind of a little bit of an Ubisoft thing going on there. The game audio is a bit high. Hold on one second then. I don't know if this means you will lose the feed or not. I have to flip between some things and even boost my voice a little bit, right? So there, that should work a little bit better. And it's just, it's just because I'm switching between views. I don't, so like, I don't know if you guys even lost the feed there. I'm using a single monitor to switch between when I need to, um, to edit some things and when I'm actually playing the game. I have a separate monitor um, I'm using my laptop to look at chat. Cool, so you didn't lose the signal. That's very good to know. Um, so this is the, the plot, right? Link has been asleep for a century. And motherfucking... There we go. Who could that be? That pig-faced little, <laughs> little bastard. He's not little. He is terrifying. That is Ganon. That is... The Calamity Ganon. Now then. And when you end up you getting your powers finally. and you can get off the plateau, Before you can actually late. run straight to Hyrule Castle and fight him. Um, you don't necessarily want to do that. You can. Uh, getting there is incredibly difficult. Uh, and then if you don't... if So there are a couple of main dungeons within this game. To call them dungeons is a little bit of uh, me overplaying it. They're not really like strict um, strict dungeons. I'm gonna fall and die because <laughs> um, I'm not used to climbing. They are... so there are a bunch of shrines that you can do to unlock health and hearts and to um, up your stamina. I didn't mean to fall there at all. But there are also main dungeons. There are four of them. In each of these dungeons, you fight a boss. Um, as you might imagine, inside those dungeons, uh, those bosses, if you do not kill those bosses and you head straight towards the final boss at Hyrule Castle, those four other bosses, you will have to fight like super powered versions of them, which is just kind of wild. I've seen a speedrunner attempt it by going straight to Hyrule Castle, it has not really worked out for them. I think this is when he comes down with the glider, yeah. So, the first time you play through the game, probably best to actually do the four dungeons and wander around, enjoy the shrines. Speedrunners are currently finding the routes through this game. Uh, so I have seen somebody who has gone straight to Hyrule Castle, there is somebody who has fought two of the smaller bosses and then gone through a, a small side segment before going to Hyrule Castle for the final fight. That run had, had a total time of 3 hours and 39 minutes and 39 seconds. The run that was plotted out that goes straight to Hyrule Castle is incredibly risky. And so that one was uh, was done by Seth Bling, who I got to talk to this week. He was very, very nice. And the route that he has takes a little bit of time on this plateau to get all of his weapons, right? And his abilities. Also the glider. The glider is actually essential, at least at the moment. You need it to, to defeat the final boss, I believe. Um, as far as I am aware, right? And so... Seth's run takes about 
I want to say 40 minutes to take care of everything on the plateau, which is going to a couple of the shrines, getting all your powers, and then getting off the plateau. Once you get off the plateau, the route that he has put together gets to Hyrule Castle. If you're going straight to Hyrule Castle, it'll take about 12 minutes, 15 minutes, if you're going a little slow. He takes extra time in order to grab some weapons so that adds on a, a little bit of extra time in the best of possible circumstances that speed run if that route is viable and they actually survive against the end boss which again very very hard because there's a boss rush against four super powered enemies and then the final boss that has two phases you will um you will have a run that lasts i want to say probably um, an hour and a half, right? Um, but that's being very generous and assuming like really peak performance, which is something that is possible, right? Like anything is possible. Doesn't mean that it's likely yet, uh, mostly because the main ways that uh, damage is happening to the bosses in that run is through, um, the. it's called a flurry, uh, like a tempest flurry or flurry attack or something i forget and what happens is if you dodge at a very spe specific time you can do a very powerful counter attack um i don't want to pass time by the fire those power attacks uh those counter attacks are are pretty strong but in many cases require some very demanding timing and if you are going straight to Hyrule Castle, you only have three hearts. And a lot of things in that final boss rush and the final boss fight will kill you in one hit. Because that game presumes... That game. I say that game as if the game's not out. The game presumes that you will have a lot more hearts, you will have a lot more gear, and so... A single blow from a stray spear or a strange magical attack can kill you, right? Just because you are not going to be powerful enough to do anything about it. The The main thing to understand here is that... Um, so let me see if I can climb up. Did he give me his glider? I don't know. I think he did. So... Right... The big thing right now is, that, so there's this plateau that you are on, and um, so you can see right there, I just jumped because of being able to jump. So the game presumes that when you jump off that plateau, you fall. It's not... Um, you're not voiding out of bounds or anything, right? It's not a void thing where you're hitting a specific trigger. It's some sort of weird plane that extends a lot further out. It's not giving you... Um... So what I'm trying to say is that it's not giving you like the, oh, you fell thing when you hit the ground. What it is doing is that it's detecting that you are a certain distance from the ledge that you have uh, moved from, presumably, right? That this is kind of how it works. And in that detection, it is, um, it's kind of saying you have gone too far there and you, and you haven't fulfilled the requirements that we want you to fulfill. Therefore we will, we will drop you back onto the plateau. There are folks who are trying to find ways to bypass that. They might have already found a, a way to bypass that. I am unsure. Um, my big thing is that I don't know how to use the glider and I think I just got one, but so there are a couple shrines here where you will get your powers and the game is very, very insistent that you complete these shrines in order to get your powers. First off, you should do it because the powers are really, really cool. They're like super fucking cool, as a matter of fact. And it's not, hey, here's your hookshot, right? Fucking do this dungeon that's specifically about the hookshot. It is, hey, we're going to let you unlock all these powers. Here's a small shrine to understand how this works. Now, once you get off the plateau, there are shrines everywhere. There's about 120 of them. And you are going to be using all your powers all the time 
to explore the world, to get through those shrines. It's not just making sure you have the Zora tunic for the water temple. It's kind of understanding that you have this broader arsenal and tool set that you can use at essentially any moment to try to find ways through your environment. To you who sets foot in the shrine, I give you this challenge. So Magnesis. So we are going to get our first ability. Magnesis is a very cool ability. It's actually one of my favorites. There's another one called Cryonis, I believe, which I really, really dig. Um, but the thing you have to do, you need at least two of these runes to get off the plateau, I believe is the minimum that we're... So I spent a lot of time in speedrunner discords and stuff, as you can imagine, as somebody who covers speedrunning. And I believe the conclusion that people came to is that you need at least two runes. I don't know if there are specific ones you need. I haven't gotten to sit down after work to talk to people and get a little bit more details. Once the run really gets into a um, really powerful state, we'll, we'll go where we can. So let's just show Magnesis by itself. Um, you get to do this shit, right? You can lift. Uh, if it is metal, you can freaking lift it, which is so cool. So in this case, it's just we needed to lift that to find a path through the shrine. Super easy, right? And now it's going to show us different ways that we can use Magnesis to explore the world a little bit. Here it is blocking our way, kind of like a little physics uh, physics puzzle. So boom, there we did. Uh, we took care of that. Um, well, that's right, I have a shield, so I'm okay. So these are guardians. They, they are small. There are other guardians. There are big there are big guardians. The closer that you get to Hyrule Castle, they are massive, and there's like an explanation for them. Um, but they will they will fucking kill you. They will kill you dead with death lasers. Um, so here we're using Magnesis, as you can see, to make a bridge. Right? Just teaching us that we can move that back and forth. Here, Magnesis, we are learning that we can open doors. So again, these shrines here are very, very short, because they're just introducing us to our powers, right? And at the end of every shrine, you get to sit here and you get to do a little bit of praying to sages, like Sheikah sages, I suppose, is, is what it is, um, right? You have proven to possess the resolve of a true hero. Um, I am Oman Ao. The creator of this trial so there are just shrines everywhere right because in this part of the timeline i suppose if, if you care about the zelda timeline like the sheikah really got their shit together um i don't care about the zelda timeline although honestly like place this one at the very end right because if you can't guess from this i mean you know the story you saw it at the start ganon has <laughs> Ganon has risen, and Link had to go into fucking, like, stasis for a century, and now we are fighting. So in terms of timeline shit for people who care about Zelda lore, and I only care about Zelda lore as far as I can, you know, kind of kick it, which, which isn't very far, I, I do enjoy the idea that this is so far removed from anything else. Although there are references to Twilight Princess, Ocarina of Time, and... Um, I believe Sky. I mean, Skyward Sword is for any of them, but I do know they reference. Uh, uh, they reference Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess vaguely, very vaguely. But the cool thing here is just like, friggin', like this can go anywhere. This game is so self-contained. I f I really like it. So we got this. Um, I can keep on asking him for the paraglider. <laughs> See, we need to get the paraglider to get off of the plateau, and to get the paraglider from the dude, we need to get a certain amount of runes. Maybe it's the two, but we do need to get all of our powers. They're very, very good. Mm. I like the idea of Link, who just, like, really, really wants to, to fucking paraglide. Because I feel like that's all of us on the inside. So, I'm gonna re-up the social on this, just because, like, 
hey, this is a good game, and I want people to sit and enjoy it. So their ancient technology disappeared the Sheikah. Um, how something like that survived all this time, hidden in a shrine? The shrine that was no more than like 20 minutes away from where I was that I did not go to. So... So we need to go to each shrine, he'll give us the paraglider, but in the process we're going to get basically all of our powers. Which are... they're cool. They're really, really cool. Um, the best way to survey the area is from a high point around here. Um, how about you make it to the top of that tower again? Are you joking? I am afraid not, but do not worry. I have a little trick to share for your effort. Take a look at the map on your Sheikah slate. You see those blue icons? You should recognize the cave where you woke, the shrine you came from, and the tower. You can travel instantly to any of those places using the Sheikah Slate. Um, so Link doesn't talk. Um, not even So not even in cutscenes. Um, other characters talk, so we will get flashbacks. Um, provided we find the memories in this game, because he has woken up without his memory. We will find the flashbacks where other characters will talk, but Link himself. At least in everything that I have seen. He does not talk. Which I am absolutely fine with. Very, very comfortable with. You can see the stamina bar goes down when you are swimming too, which is just... Right, and I can do like the little... But if I'm careful, I will... <laughs> not, not if I'm careful. If I'm the opposite of careful, as a matter of fact, I will drown. Which is just not fun. We did die already by falling off this goddamn tower. Um right down like a champion because we are the hero of time yeah so you make dialogue choices right but those aren't voiced it's not like i'm choosing right like i'm not choosing between renegade and paragon link it's just like hey what what would link say right i don't know he's a he's an adventurer maybe he would say this thing or xyz thing um it's tempting to jump up, but you don't really need to jump up. Instead, you can sort of go here and make your way over. And we're going to climb to the top of the tower again so that we can get um, sort of get a view here. And you can see uh, right now Magnesis. And if I want to at any given time write Magnesis. And if I look around, um, I will invariably find in the environment things that I can use my Magnesis on, which is very, very cool. When I was playing this game before it came out, we were playing it at the office, and I solved a puzzle. I just came across a lake with a chest in it. Um, not in the lake, rather. There was like a platform that was above the lake. And to solve uh, sort of the puzzle of that lake, even though there wasn't very a, um, like a distinct puzzle puzzle, right? I had to use my magnesis power in order to find a solution, which just means that there's stuff outside in the world that will require you to use your powers. So it's not just shrines or dungeons or boss fights. It is all around. These things have a lot of use. I really appreciate that about the game. And granted, I have not gotten a lot of time with this game. Uh, I think before playing right now, I've only played, right, like, I'll, I'll ballpark and say, like, 20 minutes of this game. It's a very gorgeous game. The the way the yeah, Danny DeVito for uh, as the voice for Link, maybe Zelda. I don't know. Well, that was more like uh, Gilbert Godfrey. Whenever I think of Danny DeVito, I think of Always Sunny. I, I think of um, the, the Gang Gets Analyzed. And I just think, oh, oh, you unzipped me. Oh, you unzipped me, Doc. It's all coming back. Um, did you forget how to travel instantly? Yep, I forgot. Open the map on your Sheikah Slate and select one of the blue icons. Um, the good news is that you can use your Sheikah Slate at any time to fast travel. You can even use it in combat, which is very cool. I wanted you to join up me, uh, me up here so we could use this as a vantage point to search for shrines. Did you know about the scope on your Sheikah Slate? 
Gilbert Godfrey as Link would just be the worst. Be like, Zelda! Jafar! Um, we can place pins on our map for references. Stick a pin anywhere that you're interested in. How do you know? Just a few tricks I've picked up after many, many years in the wild. You may take my advice or leave it. Go ahead and look if you feel so inclined to do so. Um, so we want to find shrines. That looks like one. That's also a tower over there. That looks like a shrine as well. Can I? Yes. How do I zoom in? I feel like there was a way for me to zoom. I lost it. I don't know how to use uh, know how to use the Sheikah slate yet. Um, I'm hitting. I keep on hitting the B button because I think it's the A button. Um, so that is a shrine. And that is a shrine. And that is a tower. Cool. Um, and those will be on our map now, which is nice. And so we'll just go down this again. We will do this little whirly gig maneuver running down the side. The one thing, and this will probably be the focus... Uh, once I've given more voice and thought to it and some explication, the one thing that strikes me about this game particularly is, um, so I've had a couple of people talk about the silence of this game and sort of the melancholy of this game. My boss, Steven Totillo, um, kind of really liked focusing on the sound design of this game, of hearing the world, of hearing the sound of rain or the sort of rush of wind. And then also an Austin Walker's review for Waypoint, which is a very good review that I recommend people read. He was talking about the idea of, um, of how these games end up being essentially about the destinations that you reach, but they're also kind of observable. And um, there's this kind of somber thing to the world this sort of somber feeling which i think is pretty cool didn't mean to toss that sword um i forget how to use my there's my bow do i have arrows i don't have arrows that's a problem because there's that bokoblin there that i want to deal with um alternatively if he's not looking we can try using magnesis to fuck with their shit But I did not get to pull it in time, unfortunately. So you can see my plan there was to maybe <laughs> maybe use Magnesis to <clears throat> make that um, waypoint do not officially review games, you say. It was a review. <laughs> it is, you do not have, you, functionally that is what that is. That's, that's how that sort of works. And I'm not saying that with any animus towards <laughs> towards Austin's writing or towards Waypoint's house style, that is just, that is a review. That is what that was. Um, and to call it otherwise, or to couch it otherwise, um, seems silly to me. Uh, that is just me, though, coming from a website where we do reviews, but we also are very careful not to, um, not to do scored reviews. Thank God we don't do those. That's the worst. Scored, <laughs> scored reviews are just not a good time. I have a quarter of a heart. <clears throat> cool. Let's get this guy to keep on chasing us. He's the biggest threat. I put up his shield and he hit me. I didn't think he would do that though. Um, but his his point was sort of about the world, and and for him, the the thing about the world is sort of the punctuation marks of the things that you find, right? So coming across a lake that somebody needs to, um, you know, somebody else had been searching for, or coming, you know, finding a, um. You know, finding a, a, a hidden building with a couple of NPCs or, or things like that. I'm not really offering concrete examples from that review. I read it earlier today um, and enjoyed it uh, quite immensely. 
I, I think I think my takeaway from I mean I haven't played too long. Um, yeah, if you won't be able to post links in my chat, I don't care who you are. That is unfortunately just not happening. Oh boy, that's because it's nighttime. We're dealing with these with these terrible skeletons. Um, if you were paying attention, you might perceive that there was a slight drop in frame rate there for a minute, which is not great. Um, so we're going to take the spear. We're going to take the um, the skeletal bokoblin hand as well. Um, and we'll grab the club. We just need weapons right now, so we need a ton of weapons. Um, for me, I think what I've found with Breath of the Wild when I was playing it, sort of when we were off the plateau, I found that the most interesting thing to me had been the space in between. Which is to say, the journey of um, reaching a destination is far more interesting than me, at least for now, than actually reaching the destination. Which seems really esoteric, but I've thought about this in regards to video game combat as well. And I think very often the most important things in combat are the things we choose not to do and not necessarily the things that we choose to do. So I'm I'm more interested a lot in the in the way that combat and other things in games uh, manages to reset itself, manages to find a different pace. And in doing so, it often means that we need to stop and reassess what is happening at any given point, and at least in Breath of the Wild, travel does that. Um, travel f uh, fulfills that purpose, where you um, you get to contemplate sort of what you are doing, and then when you are at a place, you can take care of it, and sure, that is... Um, that's kind of the punctuation mark, you know, getting to the place. But the th I, I don't think I'm as interested in the punctuation mark as I am in the writing of, like, how you get there. Um, if that makes any sense. Uh, for me, the interesting thing is the journey and less the destinations that we end up at. Um, how that manifests is strange. Um... A little different. Um, I want a better shield. It's a pot lid. Shit. How do I cook? How do I cook shit? I don't know how to cook shit. How do I cook? I wonder. Because right now I have peppers, but I get the sense that climbing up there it is going to be very cold. And he said that there was a winter doublet. And so my question becomes, can I steal his winter doublet if I can find it? One thing is for certain, this fucker has not <laughs> uh, told me how to cook. We can do this. Let's see if we find anything. No, pitchfork, no. Let's see if we can take out this camp. He's going to call his dudes. There's actually a noise meter in this game. He's going to see me. I don't give a shit. Right. And we can do that. Yeah, I think you just drop ingredients. So we'll have to experiment and try it. Um... Oh, great, you ran right underneath me, you little shit. Freaking jerk-ass Bokoblin. Nobody's dropping a lot of arrows, though. Actually, when they shoot, they... I can pick up their arrows, right? So if I want to, I could theoretically farm arrows, right? Like, hey, here we go. Thanks. Keep on giving me more, buddy. Which is just <laughs> such a silly notion. Um, 
I'm just sitting here and farming arrows? Like, where's it gonna come from? Right over there. But I don't know if I can pick up a ton? Uh, oh, he, oh good, he dropped like a bundle. If I want to, then I can do something like that. Um, which sets me up for a critical attack as well, which is very, very nice. That uh, big aerial attack is a bit of a commitment, though. But I broke my axe. Uh, we can use a club for now. To... It's not a good weapon, but it is. It is pretty nice. Um, there is something over here blocking the path. I wonder if I can burn it down. Right, um, right. That is blocking my way. And there, oh, there's a beehive though. Um, cool. Uh, are those bees gonna start coming along? Where's my torch? Torch? See that? Light that torch. Get rid of those bees. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that shit. Those bees will get in my eyes. They will sting me. Um. So we got some honey. So tons of mushrooms. What is going to be inside here? You think it's going to be some armor? Oh, bomb arrows! Very cool. I was definitely not expecting it to be bomb arrows. What can we grab? A burning club, which I don't need. We can steal their food, though. Which I am always down for. And we can open the chest, because we took care of them. Uh, so I'm okay with that as well. This will probably be a weapon. A throwing spear. That's okay. Um, I'm a bit unclear on how to drop food, so let's try and go through the menu and and see what we can cook, right? I think I want to cook up those peppers. So if I'm here and I go into my menu, um, right? That is cooked food. These are all materials and ingredients. Um, I, this is annoying to me. Can hold. Oh, I need to hold them. So wait. A little arcane, but we can... Hold two of them, return to game, drop the peppers. And we can get some nice sauteed peppers. Uh, I do want to try grabbing that, grabbing that, and the frog. <laughs> and seeing what happens. Um, this could be a disaster, right? An apple, a frog, and a mushroom? Dubious food, not very good. Right, so you find out the recipes. In this case, I don't wanna eat that dubious food. Um, I do want to see, right? I want to experiment all the time. So I want to see what happens if I try and cook some of this honey up, will it burn up? No, I've got some energized honey candy. Refill some of my stamina, gives me some health. Very good. So the spicy pepper is the consideration. There's the shrine up there, so we need to find our way up that shrine. And the thing for us to truly do is to um, is to eat some of that, some of those peppers, right? So we need to go to the food that we cooked. And I will get five minutes of cold resistance, which is just super, super great. This, I am uh, 
can I drop it anywhere? I wonder. Uh, for now, I do not know. Um, torch, yes. No, I want the sword. Cool. Um, bit of a gap there, but remember, gang, we still have... Oh, the axe broke, but I can still use this to chop down the tree. And we will use that to cross the path, right? See that, Breath of the Wild? I'm onto your game. We can deal with these bokoblins. More apples if we want them, too. Cool. Um, in fact, let's grab some of these apples. Let's get very needy and greedy. Let's grab, like, a couple. I don't want to take, like, a bajillion of them, but... Right... Cold resistance will definitely help because I can see the chill happening already. And the goal here is to hopefully find a viable way to climb up the mountain. But I don't know the best way to do that. Oh, there we go. There's like actual ledges here. So we can slowly climb our way up the mountain. Not bad, not bad. There's some cool mushrooms that we can take too. I like that. So this is the kind of exploration that I think is really, really cool and probably taps into a lot of that sort of, you know, oft quoted, oft um, spoken of a sense of exploration and, and stuff that Miyamoto had when he was exploring as a child. He's always keen on telling people about that, which I think is a great story. The idea of exploring forests as a kid. I used to do that with my cousin. And um, I, distinctly rem I distinctly remember one time we uncovered a bee's nest and made some very poor mistakes, including that mistake right there. Um, where I just fell to my doom. Um, in that case... Let's just eat some raw mushrooms. And uh, we'll be okay. But I remember... It was a hornet's nest, maybe a yellow jacket's nest, and we... <laughs> well, he threw a rock at it, and... Uh, boy, that was, a, that was a fun afternoon. Um, but then we went swimming. So that was fine. Right? That's what we want. Good thing we have that cold resistance. You can see the temperature is just not... Not all that, sw not all that swell. It's pretty cold on the top of this mountain. What happens without cold resistance? Um, so I believe your stamina will get kind of shot. My stamina just ran out, but I'm on a nice little ledge. I thought I was on a ledge. Fuck. My god, I'm not dead. Uh, but I am having trouble climbing. I believe it drains your stamina faster. I think in the worst circumstances, you will actually lose health. It's like walking into a fire area without having some sort of heat resistance, right? It's like going to Death Mountain Crater in Ocarina of Time without having the red tunic. You will just slowly have the life sapped out of you because w why not? Um, textures here on this, on this not as impressive, but I think I'm willing to let that slide given the game's presentation doesn't seem to focus heavily on its graphics in the sense that this is not trying to be a killer app of graphical performance. Um, I think the, the big deal with this game is sort of what it's doing uh, systemically. I don't think I'm interested in the, in the possibility of like the Switch's hardware output, because we know it's already going to be sort of suboptimal compared to its competitors in the field. So instead, 
I will kind of like I will kind of roll with it. Downside here though is that we are about to lose our cold resistance, which is just that's a bummer, right? And we will see what happens. I think we're okay at the moment. We also have to be really careful climbing. Um, I'm still not used to X being the top button, but I'll get used to it. I definitely do enjoy using the Pro Controller, though. It feels very comfortable in my hand. It has uh, some nice kind of curved sides to it. Um, similar to the Xbox Pro Controller, a little softer and more rounded ergonomically than what you have with a DS4. A DS4 is a great, like a fucking great controller, but it is a little starker and a little more utilitarian than other controllers that you will get. It's not as uh, bonkers as the early stuff, right? But you still have to deal with some of that old kind of fidgety stuff. So here we are, a shrine. And we will see what power we get here. Um, but I hope it's something really cool. I mean, I know they're all cool, but I just don't know which is coming next. I'm going to guess because we're at the top of the mountain and it's kind of cold, we're going to get um, Cryonis. We're going to get the ice ability. But that is me spitballing. I do not know for sure. Interesting thing about these load times, I'm hearing potentially from speedrunners that the load times are shorter on the Wii U doesn't mean that they are necessarily of a massive difference but that adds up over time if you're doing a speedrun so it is something that's worth noting oh um we're gonna get stasis that's what this one is I'm Obadim in the name of the goddess Hylia I offer you this challenge yes so this is stasis you guys are going to like stasis stasis is a very very cool power so stasis starts off very simple. And you can see it's like Magitech. Well, not full Magitech, right? Because there's not like walkers or anything. Well, I mean, there are. There's the guardians. But that it's still a little bit more arcane. But it's like, hey, this mixture of technology. And then like, oh, we've affixed the proper rune to this thing. So stasis. You can stop an object, uh, stop an object in time while storing its kinetic energy. The stored energy will act upon the object object when time resumes. So for the initial uses of stasis in this, I imagine it's just going to be us freezing stuff. So for instance, this is our stasis ability right now. And the thing we want to do is uh, we want to find things that we can freeze. And in this case, I just want to freeze that so that I can run across this platform. Not too bad, not too hard, pretty easy. The next thing we want to do is see if we can run up here. Oh no, I'm gonna get hit. Um, because I just realized uh, that stasis has a cooldown. So we will fix that. So that's the second time. Uh, yeah, so archives will always be up on this channel. I will also be putting up a more I'll be putting this on um, on my YouTube, so fret not, the rest of it will be there. Unfortunately, I won't be playing a lot of this game over the weekend because I need to start reviewing another game, which I cannot talk about at the moment. Um, so here we're, we want to have our stasis recharge, if that's okay because you will see that the goal is going to be freezing that ball so that we can not get hit by it. It's a pretty direct puzzle, nothing too crazy, but this ball is a problem and I don't want to get hit by it, so I'm going to go and do this, which is very good. So this, it's going to give me the hammer, um, right? And the thing that you are going to learn about stasis here or I'm gonna try and use it here to teach people about stasis. <laughs> um, right, let's let's try this. Let's. This is probably the foolish way to do it. Okay, but sledgehammer, right? Um, so I'm gonna hit it. 
Maybe I won't be able to hit it hard enough, but you can see it keeps all of its kinetic energy. So when I did that, it, it launched forward. It launched super fucking far forward because um, stasis freezes something, but still conserves all of that uh, kinetic energy, which means that you will be able to... Once again, you can see it in action, so we're just going to smack the fucking shit out of this thing, right? And when time resumes, um, this thing's just going to go fucking wild, right? Um, still ended up on the track, so not too bad, but stasis, very cool power, lots of cool applications if you handle it correctly. Um, but the, the issue here, I bet, is like, oh, I can't push it. It's too heavy, right? But what I can do is stasis it again and just hit the shit out of it. Build up that energy and then watch it soar. Ready? Fan-fucking-tastic. Such a cool ability. They really, really <laughs> came out um, with very strong designed abilities. Very exciting and cool game world which we will get off the plateau eventually and we will explore, which should be very, very nice. I'm checking very briefly to see where the, where the votes are and whether or not I should lick this thing when I get the chance. Um, Right now, 59% say that I should lick it, and 41% say that I should not. You know what I'm actually surprised about? Um, I'm surprised that there are a fair number of people who do not want me to lick the cartridge. Which I kind of appreciate, because according to Jeff, and definitely according to Fahey, it it's not good. It's not good. And I'm pretty sure Danica and some people over at Waypoint did it too, which is just a mistake. We started what is basically, well, Jeff did, right? The worst, like the worst kind of um, a video game meme where we just encourage like the weirdest fucking behavior. Um, I love it, but also at the same time, I don't. It's really, really strange. Um, so that's another shrine, right? Which is just not cool. So that was the Magnesis Trial. This was the... This was the, um... The Stasis Trial. This over here looks like a shrine that we can go to as well. So let's mark that on our Shiga Slate. Right? Oh, see, I keep on getting the controls messed up a little bit. So we'll mark that. And then because I don't want to do too much traveling. We'll actually travel to this tower. Um, again, controller thing. The the A button is actually kind of offset to the right. But we can teleport because of course we can. Why not? Doing very, very well. It's pretty exciting. I think so, anyway. So there's the dude. We all want to be the dude. I'm surprised I haven't found more, um, more armor. It's kind of something I thought I would find more of, but I haven't yet, which is kind of a bummer. Let's hop on down. We'll go to the next shrine. Getting to that other one seems a bit troublesome. I just don't know the best route. Right. It's one thing to see other people route their way through the world of a game. It's uh, completely another to actually stand by and attempt to do it for yourself. I've seen routes through this plateau that are pretty damn quick, but um, without having done it myself, I can't. Here's the Bokoblin arm, though. Um, you can see it's starting to grab my ass. Look at it, ready? There's the hand. Check that shit out. That's so funny to me. You can also grab skeleton heads and run around with them. 
So I'm not actually as interested in stasis as I am in having magnesis for now. If I find metal things, I can do some cool shit. Um, we might not have anything that we can use yet, but there tends to be large boulders or other things that we can use to really explore and change the game world. This is kind of like a little maze. I wonder if there are some enemies hiding on the inside. You can see the ruins of some of the guardians, those big, big giant robots. They are bad news bears when you encounter them. They are very dangerous. Um, well, shit. Speaking of which, uh, I can't let this thing hit me. Whew. Right? But I think more of them are probably going to activate, which is just not cool. Uh, so I got a line of sight <laughs> the shit out of this. Um, and then later on, they can move. Which is just terrifying to me. Can I climb this wall? I cannot. Nope, but there is a guardian. Oh, it's gonna hit me. Yeah, so guardian beams are just terrifying. Yeah, so it's very physics-based. And it is an interesting combination of open world and to have that too, isn't it? So, what's that, our third death? The first was accidentally falling from a tower. The second was against like a, a more powerful moblin or a uh, bokoblin. And this was against a, um, a guardian. Guardians are just the, f <laughs> the f I say it as if they're terrible. Um, they're just strong. They're just very, very powerful. Um, right? So you want to be careful and find the best ways to uh, get to where you need to go if you can. Right, and I just want to avoid <laughs> all of those things, so we'll go around here. Uh, so which one is this? I wonder what power we are going to get here. Um, I'm going to... I, I, I keep on guessing uh, Cryonis, which I think people will like. Um, it's a cool power, provided there's water. Um, but if there is water, oh my gosh. The things you can do, the places you can go. Um, very enjoyable power. If you do have questions about the Switch, I can answer some of them. I can't take it out of its dock without getting rid of the feed that you guys are seeing, so I need to stream with it in its dock. Um, oh, this might be remote bombs, which because I see a cracked wall. So we will do this trial. Yep, bomb trial. So you get bombs in this game, and they are not a resource that you need to track. <laughs> They are not a, um, right? The, you don't have to find them in chests. You don't need to go to the bomb chews store and buy a bunch of bomb chews. You just have bombs. And you will see how these work. They are kind of uh, Magitek bombs, which are really, really neat. So we're going to get um, two different kinds of bombs. Uh, you can see they just have different shapes. That's all it is means that one will roll and one will remain stationary. So if we want, we can open up our powers and right, we can throw a bomb. Oh, one second, guys. Oh, that's right, they're remote bombs. Yep. See, you can do that. I have to pause for a second. Somebody sent me a message. Sorry. So yeah, you can see the different bombs are really cool. And I like, um, in particular, these bombs. Uh, you just kind of drop them, and you don't need to worry about them rolling. And then you can just blow them up like that, which I think is really cool. And I really do enjoy the fact that you do not have to do a ton of hunting for bombs. They have a cooldown, of course, right? But you don't have to go hunting for a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
So some pretty cool stuff there. We just got a claymore, um, which we put back because we have too many weapons. Um, let's see. Let's can we get? Let's drop some of these clubs and drop the basic boko sticks and stuff. I don't think I need them right now. Instead, I will definitely take the claymore. Which is just hashtag the good stuff. And then we will see what the bomb challenge is. Doesn't seem too bad thus far. Um, so this is just a test of what we can do with our remote bombs, but uh, one of the nice things is Honestly, you just... You can do that. Oh, I didn't mean to hit myself, but like, yeah, you can just detonate it in midair. Um, sucks that I hit myself. What do I have for food? I'm still not used to the controls and the inventory. Um, rush rooms. Cook it before eating to temporarily increase your movement speed. Cook it to release its stamina restoring properties. We have proper food, though. We have steak. And then we have the dubious food, which we will try eating. And maybe it will make us puke. I don't know how dubious food works in this game. But I have a feeling that if we eat too much dubious food, it would not be a great thing. Here... This is a cool part for remote bombs. So we can pull out this bomb. I've seen this, right? Uh, we can drop it in here and we can detonate it at the right time. So it's going to come here. It's going to shoot our bomb out. And we just detonate at the right time, right? And if we want to, we can probably pull out another. Which is just... That is really cool shit to me. And get that physics stuff going on. It's gonna get knocked out. And we can just destroy it. And that's our path and that's the bomb trial. So now the only thing is actually Cryonis. You can see there's probably a side thing for us to do. Not gonna do it. Gonna try and get off this plateau, explore a bit of the world. When we explore the world, we are literally going to do just that. Um, not going to really pursue main story. I am certainly not going to try and run towards Calamity Ganon, but I am interested in uh, exploring the world with you. Um, people are coming in and out of the stream. That is fine by me. This is very, very fun. Very fun to explore this game. I'm gonna have to end up licking it. I'm gonna have to end up licking the... licking the cart. Which is just going to be a disaster. Let's retweet and let's just keep on letting people know that I'm doing Breath of the Wild. So we just have to do the last shrine, which we can just check on our map. It will be the only shrine that we don't have a bunch of shit to deal with. Um, remote bomb. Oh, I didn't mean to... I got the buttons mixed up. Cool. And the question is, can I remote bomb these? Can I remote bomb the guardians? Are they alive? That one is. It's showing me this again because I died last time. Um, it made me drop my bomb. That's not cool. Let's... One thing you can do, actually, is this. Um, well, first off, let's get rid of you. You're in my way. You'd be surprised, but... Um, shockingly, their weak points in their eyes, you can actually shoot with your arrows, and it makes a, makes a difference. I know, right? Such a surprise. Uh, let's climb over this wall and get away from those those fucking monstrosities. Oh shit, there's one. Okay. So let's check out our, our uh, Sheikah Slate. And so the last thing we have to do is we need to get here. We need to get through um, beyond Mount Hylia. Which is kind of a 
troublesome thing for us to do. If only because, um, furthermore, I just want to actually put a straight up pin there. Oh no, that's fine, actually. Because we kind of have to go back the way we came. Which isn't too bad, but we will do that to get to where we need to go. And then after that, we should be good. I don't know, what is this yellow one on the map? There's a yellow marker pointing somewhere. Oh, um, that's a story marker, isn't it? So we need to go to the purple one, though. And in this case, because we are on the plateau, unfortunately we do not have a horse. We can get one later on in the game. We can tame a wild horse. And that will be really good for us. Um, those guys are in there. Shit. Can I shoot the rope? Didn't quite... <laughs> Hasn't quite gone the way that I planned, so we are just gonna... I forgot that there's physics in this game now, which means I have to be a little bit more careful with my arrows. Is there any metal stuff for me to fuck around with here? Not really. Um, let's kind of get back to where we were, towards the mountain. And we will try to chart the best path through the mountain. And that seems like a pretty good, pretty good bit of progress. There was a little bit of frame drop there. I will be testing this out on the tablet later on. Um, oh, I forgot to equip an, an item because I, uh, I should get some chew jelly though. Cool. Which I am down for. And then there is this sleepy little guy. The important thing to know about your weapons degrading, and I think it mentioned it earlier, but I want to mention it again, is if you break your weapon on an opponent, you actually do double damage. So while you do lose the weapon, if you are, um, right, you're not completely, you know, it's not a complete waste in the sense that you are at the very least getting a little bit more of uh, extra damage and use out of your weapon. Which I think is a very, very fine thing. I think that's a very, very good decision. Um, let's grab some of these shrooms. And then hopefully if we, if we find more peppers, we can make some sort of mushroom and pepper deal, which would be really, really cool. Um, cooking still not something I'm completely sold on um, how to do. Eventually, I am sure I will get into it for now. Nothing too much. The basic structure of this game kind of demands that you experiment and fail and even kind of bumble around with the controls and end up succeeding and screwing up and, and all sorts of things. I could find a fire and wait until the morning, but we do want to try and get up towards that shrine. So we will see what, uh, sort of what's down here by the docks. Um, but you can see that the temperature is getting cold. Um, let's fight these guys if we can. You can see I did a little bit of extra damage there. Not a ton. Um, oops, I'm messing with my... Right? And then you can see Traveler's Claymore. It's so strong that I'm actually going to bust up their uh, their shields. Because it's just so strong. That guy's going to try and get his skeleton's head back. But in the best of all po possible worlds, I just knock. <laughs> I mean, right, like, now he's just a head. His body fell off the cliff. Um, so if I want, I can just walk around with this. But we'll, <laughs> we'll punt him off the cliff. Because why not? Uh, but more of them are going to show up because it's nighttime, unfortunately. So let's see if we can run and make our way to a place where 
Maybe these moblins up here will have some some peppers that we can consume. That would be of great use to us. There are actually moblins down there too. So we have two options to search for them. Um, how do I change my... That's how I change my bow. This is how I change my arrows. I'm not good at aiming those yet at all. Um, I do have this claymore though. So fuck you. Uh, and then there does seem to be a thing where I can cook some food. Maybe I will find some food by messing with these guys as well. I thought I heard something. That looks like a metal box I might be able to mess around with. Um, let's see. Let's check Magnesis. Yeah, metal boxes, right? So I can use some stuff here, but there's not a lot of purpose for these boxes. We can do some fun physics stuff, right? We can just let it go. And then it falls. So there is some stuff in there that we can that we can use. So if we want to, we can just lift the box, let it fall, and see what's inside. Some arrows and a couple other things. These are the leftover things from all the um, bokoblins that we just took care of. But inside of their things, we might be able to find some cool stuff. Uh, if we are very, very fortunate, here inside of this chest, there will be some sort of uh, warm clothing or something that we can use. That would be very, very beneficial. Amber, fossilized resin with a caramelous Karma, car, caramelesque sheen. It is valued as a component in decorations and crafting since ancient times. Not sure what it does, but that's okay. I do want to go down here, even though we'll probably get to deal with those skeletons along the way. Let's not go over that edge. Um, to see if these guys sleeping by the fire have any food that we can use while we climb our way to that shrine. And the question becomes, do the skeletons show up as well? And I think we're okay. Um, they do have food that we can steal. And if I was really, really quiet, I could sneak in without... I could sneak in without um, getting their attention too much. Instead, let's kind of open stuff up and see what we get. Not much, but we can get some food here. We can get some steak. I am fine with that, because we can also use food to stave off some of our hunger. Just tossing that arm, because... Uh, let's have the spear for now. And we will see what we can do. The cold is definitely going to be a problem. And I basically consumed those peppers at the wrong time. I was mistaken. There is metal that we can use here, though. To make a bridge across. first deal with these. But you can see I'm taking damage because of the cold, which is just not fun. But we can uh, try and make a thing like that, but the water is going to freeze me, so I fell in at the wrong time. That's unfortunate. But I can try and make the approach again, which is fine. So 
So that kind of dropped us back a bit, which is a bummer. But let's see what we can do. So, the cold. The cold is the problem. The water is a big problem too, particularly because we don't have the wonderful Cryonis power, which would allow us to make some nice floating ice blocks and a couple other things. Instead, we can try and get by on our food. Because we really just need to get up there to the shrine. Which seems really difficult, but it's not the worst thing. What we can do is try and get past these dudes and head towards a fire and chill. Maybe, uh, potentially anyway, kill some of these bokoblins here. And uh, actually, yes, so there are peppers right here, so we can cook. Yes, so you can see spicy pepper, spicy pepper. We can just cook the hell out of these peppers. And that will get us what we need. Which is perfect. Um, I'm not sure the best way to do this. Um, oh, you can only take down the one at a time. So we do want to get rid of that and use normal arrows to shoot that down so we can get them. I thought the bomb arrow would take care of both of them. Turns out, not at all. Oh, that guy's fucking strong. Not a fan. Not a fan of that situation. Uh, let's eat this delicious baked apple alongside some of these yummy delicious mushrooms. And then let's f focus on not having this guy beat the shit out of us. Let's do a jump attack, because we're going to break our thing in a second. There it is. And then we want to switch back to our spear. And go like that. So there we go. And all of these silly little bastards, these silly bastards are here. I am so glad we found the peppers, because otherwise we would have frozen our asses off going up that mountain, which is just not really good. So instead, can I open this chest? I think I can. We have some amber. How cool. Another shield. A spiked shield. How dramatic. And then, what else is left? More arrows. I will never complain about those. So let us do some cooking. And let's mostly see what we can do with these peppers. For now, for sure, let's just make a normal... Oh, the damn controller. I keep on fucking it up. Um, let's... Uh, oh, God, the button's not where I want it to be. So let's... Oh, I keep on doing it. So let's cook one of these peppers, right? All right, that didn't go the way I wanted to. The interface here is still kind of confusing me a bit. So we will... Hold... Return to game is B. Oh, because there's no fire underneath the thing. So let's put this away. Let's grab our... Not a shield. Let's grab our torch. Do this. Light that on fire. Put the torch away. I said, I said put the torch away. And then now we can cook some of these peppers, which is exactly what we want. Let's, t uh, let's try cooking three of them. That seems dramatic. Although we can try adding a mushroom in there too, make some sort of spicy stew, which I think sounds pretty good. So let's see what happens if we cook all of these together. I think it could be something really, really great. Maybe some stuffed peppers, spicy fruit and mushroom mix. So look at that. We have some nice cold resistance and it's really, really good for our health. It, it, in fact, it heals us for more than we actually have. Um, so I might want to save that and instead hold as many of these peppers as we can. Just like cook the shit out of them, right? Just cook them up so much, right? There they go. And now we should have... Um, you know what? I will consume that, actually. Right? So now we have cold resistance for 12 and a half minutes. Holy shit, are you kidding me? I think we're gonna be okay. The trick now is getting across that river, but we do have our 
magnetic powers. There it is, magnesis. So we will be able to grab that and make a sort of makeshift plank across the river, which should be really good. And we just have to put it in the right spot. So let's get over here. Um, uh, that seems pretty secure. Yes, cool. And now we have a path across the river. And we have frost resistance, so we can get up to the last shrine and we can get our last power. How exciting is that? It's like the most exciting thing ever in the history of excitement. Don't everybody scream and chat at once. Um, yeah, we'll kind of go this long way around. Look at Link. We gotta get him some better clothes. We gotta get him, like, a cloak and some good shit. Because, I mean, like, look at that. That's no good. I'm amazed he even has shoes right now. We need some stuff for him. We absolutely do. Um... Climbing up, right? It's above us, and the question is, what's our best pathway here? Not that, certainly. Let's see if there is a long way around. Yes, there is. Perfect. But there is also <laughs> uh, snowballs? Holy shit. Bunch of bacoblins and stuff being, being dipshits. <laughs> dipshits. That's such a mean thing. Let's fight him with this hammer. Oh no, he threw a s- did he throw a snowball on me? Fuck you! Uh, he- oh no, they're throwing rocks. Oh boy, that- that felt kind of close. Let's steal their food. Because I am Link. These, uh... <laughs> the food thief. You think that this seems much better, better laid out than Skyward Sword? I've never played Skyward Sword. My last one was... Twilight Princess, which I didn't really like that much. Wind Waker was my last one that I really, really liked. From what I've seen of Skyward Sword, because I have a friend who is a professional streamer, that's like his full-time job, he... Like, the story itself was kind of interesting, right? But that opening segment, you're right, is kind of... It was very directed, right? It was kind of like a theme park ride. In a way that kind of sucks, like... Think about how quickly you can get to the Deku tree in Ocarina of Time. Think about how quickly you are in Hyrule Castle in A Link to the Past. It takes a little while longer to get things going in Majora's Mask, but they're also establishing like basic mechanics for you. They're like, here's your first day. Learn how the time system works. Explore the town. Like, get to know this hub. Like, that's all very intelligent stuff. Skyward Sword seems a little forced in ways that I don't think are that great. Um, so this will be the Cryonis challenge. I say challenge. The shrines right now, you know, it's the beginning of the game. Uh, these are just here to show us the uh, the powers. Cryonis, though, is so fucking cool. Wait till you see this. And I feel... Depending on how things go, this could be a very cool way to find ways to clip out of bounds for speedrunners. There have been people going through various shrines and finding uh, some very cool shortcuts, as a matter of fact, but I feel... Um, that actually, there's, there's a shortcut, there's an amazing shortcut I saw where somebody actually free, uh, uses magnesis to toss a block in the air, then uses stasis to freeze the block so that they can jump into a torch on a corner that lets them jump to a higher ledge. It's like the most fucking amazing thing in the world. Um, Cryonis is cool though because we can do this. We can freeze and make blocks that we can climb in order to bypass obstacles. Which I think is just the coolest thing. And then this is supposed to teach you here that you can actually put them in certain spots to lift gates, which is good. And then also we can shatter these, right? Like, check that out. From a distance, we can just shatter blocks. Um, and that dude's in my way. So I didn't really want to deal with him. Uh, so I put a block in his way. Um, right? 
And you can freeze a couple at a time, and then you can just kind of shatter, shatter, which I think is just super cool. Here, we're trying to use those blocks to make a little thing for us to climb. Isn't that good? And that's basically the end of the shrine, right? This, like, like I said, these are just showing you the basics of your powers. Although now that we know that there's something here, we can, for instance, oh my gosh, look at what we've learned. I can do some cool stuff. I thought I'd make that jump, but I didn't. Instead, we can come here, open this chest. Where we found another spear, which is pretty cool by me. And this will be the last of our powers, which means that the old man will give us our paraglider so that we can get off the plateau and we can go explore the rest of the world. The massive, massive, like genuinely massive world of Breath of the Wild. Although I have seen, and there are articles on our website, I talked to the people who were doing it. There were people who got copies of this game ahead of time from Nintendo, and they plotted out some amazing routes through this game. Uh, one that takes you straight to the final boss. Once you land outside of the plateau, at least, in about 12 minutes. And then the challenge is completing the boss, which I don't think they've done yet, but Lord knows I, I'm technically off work, right? Um, except for everything I'm going to do this weekend, because I never stop working. Um, and I am sure we will get a more uh, direct speed run than the route that we have right now. The current successful speed run that I am aware of, the first completed one, um, was 3 hours 39 minutes and 39 seconds. Um, that's a pretty cool run. It was uh, done by somebody called Orchestra, who's a pretty cool speedrunner. I talked with them recently, too, after they achieved that. Yes, give me your hang glider, please. That means it is finally time. Link, it's time to tell you everything. But first, imagine an X on your map with the four shrines at the, as the endpoints. Find the spot where those lines intersect. I shall wait for you there. Why is this guy got to be... Such a silly goose. He is very magical. Um, so let us imagine that these are all... That's the Shrine of Resurrection. We don't care about that. I want to assume he's just telling us to go back to the Temple of Time. So in fact, we will do just that. Um... Let's quick travel to the... Oh, I'm so used... It's muscle memory at this point. So let's travel to the Shrine of Resurrection. Let us go to the Temple of Time. Where if he is not there... I, I do not have a hat to eat right now. I will go out tomorrow and buy a hat and eat it. Uh, presum presumably after I, I lick the Nintendo Switch controller. Which we know why they taste so bad, by the way. We got comment from Nintendo on that. They intentionally put some sort of bittering agent on it so children would not eat it. But, because we are grown adults, and we do anything for attention, because we are games journalists, we will put them in our mouths, like my co-worker did. Because, sure, why the hell not? I am impressionable, and enough people... You know, it, you know if enough people tell me to do something, I might as well do it. Um, yeah, if he's not in the Temple of Time... First off, fuck him for not just telling me where he's going. Second, again, find a hat and I will eat it. I think I take all the orbs and I pray to the goddess statue and I will get some health and some cool shit, which I'm totally down for. Um, this game... So the design of this game is really cool in the sense that I find this game beautiful, right? But at the same time, it's very clear that this world is, is like completely deprived of something essential. Uh, and, and, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that you don't really encounter a lot of um, people. Uh, not for a while, anyway. 
And it's very clear that this is a broken world uh, that it that sort of exists after the after um, this big disaster, right? And it's not something so as trite or as intractable as hope or life that has been lost, but there is some sort of essential thing that is just completely been ripped from this world, some sort of primal essential piece of nature that is just hard to quantify and hard to completely understand. So here we can spend our orbs and we can get some stuff. We can get a heart container or some stamina. So I actually want more stamina right now. Uh, I can get more hearts later. So every four shrines you do, you will be able to upgrade. And interesting there, you can see that the stamina seed looks a little bit, not a ton, but it looks a little bit like the sacred stone of the forest from um, Ocarina of Time. It looks like the Kokiri Emerald. He's up above us because he's a freaking dip. So we will have to climb our way up, but I'm pretty certain there is a ladder on the side here. Yes, there it is. Cool. And we will climb up. Isn't that great? Look at us, the hero of time, climbing up the thing. Climbing up, being the hero. And then we have to somehow make our way up here, which is just a little trickier. But I really like this. I like that view. I can't tell what that is. Can I shoot a stone? I oh, know, let's cancel that. That, that might be one of the shrines. It might just be a different angle to the shrine entrance that I hadn't noticed before. So let's talk to this dude. What's your deal, dude? Let's tell us. <laughs> well done there, young and you can see certain cutscenes we have voice acting. The time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I Those of you who guessed it, that he was the, the king, leader of Hyrule. back when the trailers came the out, no you were correct. Yeah. Look at how pretty Link is. What a pretty little boy. And there we go. Very dramatic. Not quite as dramatic as um, King Daphnis from it devastated everything in its path Wind Waker. Below. A century ago. So it's been a century it since Ganon then, fucked everything up. Was taken away from me. And he's and dead. Since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened. 100 years ago. What happened? 100 years ago. Not good stuff. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, one must know the story from an age long past. I'm down for some story time, though. The Demon though. King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also. Prophecy. A prophecy. Of course there's a prophecy. What good heroic story would exist without a prophecy? And the power to oppose it lies dormant. Remember, we don't need stories we to tell us that dragons exist. And began excavating large we need stories to it tell us that dragons can be dragons slain. And that is why we need stories. Ancestors. These relics, of course, the divine beasts, were giant there is a giant monster, of course there is a malevolent force of evil, and of course it can claim a temporary victory, but we, as resilient and wonderful human beings, can push back against those forces, and we can win. 
That's what stories tell us, and that's the cool thing about stories, and that's why I love them so much. They are essential, we need them, especially now when the world is so close to the brink. And I truly believe the world is very close to a lot of trouble. We need stories like this and silly games like this. To tell us stories of princesses and knights and dragons and all sorts of stuff. Because they will inspire us to be very good people, we selected four to be heroic, from across Hyrule and task them with the duty of piloting the divine beasts. Uh, in the middle of my rant, it's important to know that they found commander, giant robots. Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. When he fucking he showed up. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. Such a very cool design for a monster. This spinning energy of pure evil. Only vaguely recognizable as something that we've seen from the previous series from titles. Seize control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts. Turn against us. The champions lost their lives. Those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight gravely collapsed while defending the princess. Shocker, we are the appointed knight. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, Zelda the princess survived. Good for you, to girl. Face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. Oh, that's a cool shot. I like that. Very cinematic. The cool thing about this is I can take this off of my television later and play it in bed. Which I am going to do. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. Shall be very, very fun to try that, that out. Was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly. Those big eyes. Those big, almost elf-like eyes. And then you are taken He's expressive in this game. More expressive Here than he's been in previous titles. At least since Wind Waker. Later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule she's Castle, been she calls out fighting for your help. However, and holding back Ganon will soon be exhausted. For Once a century, happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Thank you for this exposition, Don. I, I want better clothing. Me. That's like the one thing I really want in this right game right now. This of you, Link. But I am powerless here. Will you fight the dude? Of course you I will. Must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Uh, Nani Diska. Ganon has maintained yeah. control over all <laughs> Some an asshole. Beasts. As well as those guardians yes, so he, those Castle. beasts, if we don't kill them and if we went right to Hyrule Castle, those beasts, we would have to fight them. They are aspects of Ganon that would fight us. They are elemental aspects of Ganon. That you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. See, there are villages, there find the and there are people, but she there's also just a very expansive world ahead. full of very little. Consult the map on your Shiga slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. I also Make enjoy that there is the twin summits of the a fantasy peaks. version of a tablet. From there, follow the road as it it's basically a fantasy north. switch, which is just super silly to me, but I love it. Hmm. Oh, dude, paraglider, what's up? Press B when I'm in the air to fucking paraglide. Look at that, quest complete. That's a cool thing to see in a Zelda game. We haven't really had quests. Like, I mean, we sort of had them in uh, Skyward Sword. We haven't really had, in my mind, quests since Majora's Mask. Hmm. Oh no, bye buddy. 
Were we buddies? I don't know. What's in here? So if we want to, we can go immediately try and fight Ganon, but that would be silly. Um, but we can freaking hang glide. How cool is that shit? And then you can see it takes up some of our stamina though, but see the main thing about speedrunning this segment is that um, oh wow is that so a plateau skip would save a lot of time but you need some powers to get through the game or they certainly help right now i believe you need the paraglider to defeat ganon um i think maybe i read somewhere that you can actually do it with a flurry attack i don't know about that but you certainly need right now the the paraglider to get off the plateau right and bypass whatever plane exists that detects um, that you're sort of falling or whatever, right? Without that, it's hard to move past that. Um, the one theory that somebody was telling me is that you could potentially gather enough speed, enough momentum to just sort of blast through it. The question after that becomes, how do you survive that landing? I do not know. And I imagine that a plateau skip will be one of the first things that we find in this game. Although if we don't, I am sure it will be one of the things that people will continually search for the way that people searched for barrier skip in Wind Waker. Um, and it took a long time for barrier skip to even be considered possible. In many ways, it like people still don't know how to break through the barrier in Wind Waker to get to Ganon once they are finally down in Hyrule. Um, but there is a way to do it because more people have actually broken through that barrier. They just don't really have a consistent setup for it yet. Plateau skip. Not as, um, as wild. So here we have a pin that I don't recall putting down um so let's delete that so you can see big map all of these segments are big areas and they have their own little towers that we can climb up to see a little bit more and i hope to see if we can't find a nearby tower um oh shit oh shit that's a monster oh shit yeah geez Yep, let's get out of here. Um, Patricia ran into one of these, and she let it- well, not let- it caught up to her and hit her in the back, and it gave her a back boost where she moved really far forward. Um, so, hey, look at that. That's a little bit of emergent and exciting gameplay where I, s I stood on a rock to see where I should go next to see if I could spot a tower, and it turns out to have been a giant rock golem, which is just- that's never fun. You can see too, that extra little bar is what I got when I um, consumed that seed. Is what's going on here. Um, so there's a tower over there. So we'll go take care of that. But there's actually a shrine here, right? So for shits and giggles, we can come down here and just do a shrine. Yeah, it's a gorgeous game. It's a gorgeous game, but it's also like a really sad game, right? Because it's very clear that this was a beautiful world. And uh, right, the very foundation of it's sort of been torn away by evil. I think there's something um, very beautiful about that that loss, but also um, that loss kind of leaves like a very genuine ache that is uh, perceivable, perceptible, tangible, um, something that you can feel when you are playing the game. It's very exciting to me to have encountered a game that has such a sense of mood. So I don't know if this will be a hard or an easy challenge. We have all the skills we need, all the items that we really require. Um, so this is the Boshkala Shrine. It will be our first shrine since the plateau. We have this here, which means paraglider, certainly. Right over there to so get this at the very least, which could be anything. More amber. I, I don't quite know what amber does, but that gave us some stuff. Here, we need to sort of guide our 
selves around with the paraglider still, so... Oh no. I hit the wrong button. Great speaking review. I don't know if I do reviews, right? I just sort of talk about the game as I encounter it. This just seems like a challenge of using the glider. Oh god, I just fucked it up again. <laughs> yeah, the fact that that rock was a giant fucking monster is just... Molto bene. That's some very good stuff. So yeah. So this is just a, um, a shrine that tests the glider. So you can see that sometimes these shrines can be very, very short. And the idea is nice short shrines with potential puzzles or challenges for your tools where you can get sort of um, those little health uh, like those the, these spirit orbs rather I should say and then once you get four you can sacrifice them at the temple yeah so cold resistance we had to go up a mountain in this game you have to deal with temperature and it was very very cold and because it was so cold, we would lose health. So to prevent that, instead of finding clothes, which I'm sure you could find clothes that would actually protect you against the elements, we cooked up a very spicy meal of, um, of peppers that gave us around 12 minutes worth of cold resistance. It gave us quite a bit. And so that's still wearing off right now. Um, trying to see what that is. Mushrooms that we can pick, uh, certainly. Uh, stamina mushrooms. Let's run across this bridge. Maybe we will encounter an enemy. Yes, that looks like an enemy. But no, no, that's not an enemy. That's a person. Look at that. That's a human being. That is not a bokoblin or anything terrifying. It's a, it's a dude. What's up, dude? We've not met. What do you need, buddy? Those strange things that popped out of the ground, did you see them? I'm not talking about the mushrooms, I'm talking about those towers. They seem to have popped up all over the place. And that's not the only strange thing that happened. These long, deserted shrines suddenly started glowing. You know what this means, don't you? The end is here. I don't know if he sounds like that or not, but I'll pretend he does. Let's see, uh, what does he need? What does he need us to do? I'm talking about that guardian, of course. Haven't you heard the stories? Oh, so he's giving me a thing like they're guardians. Some that can move. This one here, what about it? This is a different one. When they spot you, they shoot blue beams of light at you. Yeah, and if you're at low level like I was, they, f they fucking kill you. Um, yeah, those guardians are not fun. So that was Brigo. Nice to see you, Brigo. So I want to climb that tower so I can mark a couple more shrines and things. Um, we have right now Cryonis, but uh, right, like if I, I can't really use it because I don't have um, anything. But I think we will pull out Magnesis just in case we see things that we can pull up with magnets. Because there tend to be a lot. Uh, for the record, you can see the castle in the distance. I can just run there. That's where the final boss is. If I was really, really good, I could just run there, fight the final boss. I would have to fight four other bosses, um, as we've established before. But hey, why the fuck not? And the answer is uh, all sorts of reasons. Um, I'm curious. What if I threw a spear at this goat? What if I was hunting? Right, what if this dude chilled? Goat? Oh shit! Wow, I just... I just fucked that goat up. Oh my god. I feel... I feel pretty bad. But at the same time, hey guys, fresh meat. And I can cook some cool stuff. I can cook some meat and peppers. Um, as a matter of fact, I was like, I think I see some boblins... Boblins? Some bokoblins over here. Let's just deal with them. Uh, bomb arrows, though. Let's use this soldier's bow. 
And let's use this bomb arrow that I have to really mess with them. Oh, he went flying into a lake. Poor little guy. Um, and then we can just use normal arrows as they get closer. Oh, he has his shield up, though. What a little shit. What a little bastard. But we can poke him, which is fine. And then we can... Oh, he, he got underneath that little silly, silly devil. Um, we fight this dude. Oh, he didn't seem to notice that shit was going down. Oh shit, I got hit by an arrow. Headshot him, and I think we just unlocked our chest. You want a stream of me playing Overwatch? You can probably get that over the next couple of days. Although I am working on a review over the next couple days, which means that I will not be able to play a lot of Overwatch. Um, if I do play Overwatch, I can stream the PTR though, and we can I, I can show you um, the new hero, Oriza. She's very, very cool, and I think people are going to really like her. Um, actually, we have Magnesis here for these boxes, these metal boxes. Let's see what's inside them. Oh, I didn't move them high enough. Some rupees. My first rupee the entire game. Look at that, I got a single rupee. I'm rich, ma. But we are trying to break open these boxes. Because attacking them, not great. It just degrades my weapon, right? Don't want to bother with that, but we can raise them all about. Grab some rupees. Grab some, some arrows, too. But if we can, I would like to find... Um, I would like to take... Who do I main? I love... So I'm, I play DPS characters primarily, so that means Soldier 76 when I have to, I, although I, I... Those basic sort of verbs that he has for action I don't really care for. I'm a big fan of playing Tracer. Tracer can be really, really effective um, under the right circumstances, and I've been watching some very, very good Tracer players in order to get some some more hints of things. Um, on PC, now that I have a, a decent PC, uh, I do enjoy McCree, although that's a little harder, right? Um, the the skill ceiling for McCree is a little, a little higher, but mostly DPS characters. If I have to go with Tank, I can play Reinhardt. Not really big into Reinhardt, uh, so in that case I prefer Zarya. Um, but now that Ariza's in the game too, I can actually probably off-tank as Ariza, and I would feel okay with that. Well, she's not in the game, she's on the PTR. But she is. Oh, uh, the current's too strong for me to deal with this river. Um, right, because she has a shield that's kind of like Reinhardt's, except it ends up being stationary. And then she also has an ability that where she sort of hardens, um... She sort of hardens her, uh, let's grab some fish. Cool. Her armor of her own. Oh, fucking Octoroks. And, um, you can use that for some cool stuff. Oh, I knew I was gonna get hit. Um, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, those Octoroks are, are really something else. Um, I see a fire. I need a place to cook stuff. Which I don't seem to have yet. Let's eat this steak. But you can see, this is something we cooked, by the way, too. We did the spicy food. Uh, so first off, we cooked uh, a honeycomb, which gave us some honey candy, which will re refill some of my stamina if I really need it. And then we also put together some spicy fruit and mushroom mix. And you can see there, that actually gives me low level cold resistance. It gives me about eight minutes of cold resistance. Which is still a fair amount of cold resistance. I don't know why you would need too, too much yet. Uh, Silent Shroom. Um, it allows me to move stealthily. Because if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, I'm using the full AI. Uh, AI, excuse me, the HUD. I don't know what I meant to say. Um, but you can see that wavy line is actually how much noise I'm making at any given time. Um, do I still have the hammer? Fucking spear, it's gonna get destroyed. Hammer. There, we got some amber. 
Yes! Um, watch. So I can... Sorry, I'm still not used to the controls entirely, so I can... Light this. Light this. And I can put that away. And then from here... Let's try cooking something, right? So I want some raw meat. So I can select that and hold that. And I'll put some peppers in there. And let's put some mushrooms in there as well. So we'll put a couple mushrooms in there. And now I can go here and I can try and cook all that together and see what that gets me. Um, I think it should get me something pretty cool. But it, uh, it's possible for our recipes to be kind of crappy. But look at that. We got some spicy pepper steak. Uh, low level cold resistance and that means we got some very delicious delicious steak right there which is really cool i'm gonna take this woodcutter's axe yeah he's a merchant what does this guy need i venture into the forest to get my wares but i also buy from travelers like you so do you have anything rare you'd be interested in selling yeah sure what do you need um So I can cook food to get rupees, which is pretty cool. I also have weapons that I can probably- oh, he doesn't take the weapons. Amber, um, opal gets me 60 rupees. Let's just get a bunch of rupees at the start, and then if we get to, um, and I bet you everybody's like, don't sell these, but whatever. So we'll get ourselves a fair share of rupees. Um, right, because that way maybe when we end up going to, um, yeah, look, you can move around here during conversations, which I really like. Uh, how do I save? There we go, save. Let's actually make a real save file, because I haven't saved once. The game auto-saves, but that's no guarantee that things are going to go well. Um, where's the tower? There's the tower. That's been our destination the entire time. Uh, we can grab some more mushrooms, though, so we can get an iron shroom that will increase my defense. Normal hyaline shrooms. That's pretty good stuff as well. So, I think maybe after I go to this tower, I might stop for now. Um... And I might actually try taking the switch out of its little thingam thingam thingamajig and playing a little bit by myself, if that's okay. Um, I know you guys are. I know a lot of people are very interested in Zelda. Um, fuck you! Stop following. Stop following me. Um, but let's get to the top of this tower and and work some shrines and. You know, I'll probably do a little bit of stuff on my own, but I think you guys saw enough of the basic mechanics of this game to get a decent understanding of sort of what it's about and what's going on. Um, oh, jeez, getting to that. Stinking. Um, what is this? What is this? Why'd it disappear? Holy shit, what are you doing? Hey! Um, what do you want? What do you want? Okay, I don't know. Um, can I use Cryonis here to do anything interesting? Oh shit, oh shit. Um. Yeah, let's, let's use Cryonis to get across. Oh no, 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 no. Darling, you were supposed to jump. I keep on forgetting that jump is not automatic in this game. There is actually a jump button. Ready? Haha, <laughs> I jumped. And I keep on forgetting what button <laughs> the jump is, which is not good. Um, will the flow be as bad here? I don't know. What is up with this thing? Where's it going? It's like leading me. Hey, remember that time I jumped on a rock and turned out to be a giant golem of doom? Fun times. Except for the fact where it could have killed me. Hey! Oh, cool, cool rock. I'm not Hetsu. I can see you. What's up? Oh, that's right, Korok seeds. So there's like 900 of these? 
So if there's a 100% speed run that includes Korok seeds, like that's fucked up. Um, Cause this game is massive. Look at that, look at that mountain. I can climb to the top of that mountain if I want. I can see shit on the top of that mountain. Look, look, I don't even know what the friggin' hell that stuff is, but I can do whatever. Let's climb to the top of this tower and then I will make a save at the top of the tower. And I think I will relax. Um, I have been so tired. I, guys, I have, to, I have to tell you the truth. I have been so tired these last few days. And I am incredibly proud of the work that I was able to pull off over these last couple of days. Specifically the speedrunning stuff. I am incredibly, incredibly proud of some of the stories that my co-workers came out with. All the Switch coverage was amazing. All the Switch coverage around on many, pretty much all the websites was very, very good. I think Jason's review of this game was really great. Gita did um, a story today about um, some people who helped a, a, a sick Destiny player get to the lighthouse, which is something that you have to f do some really tough stuff to get to. Um, but they got him there, which I think is really, really cool. I... I don't know. I think there's just been a lot of uh, good stuff, and I'm very, very proud of our site. And I'm uh, continually honored and humbled to work with such uh, amazing coworkers and to deal with colleagues in in the rest of the field who are also uh, very good and inspire me to keep on working harder and harder. Yes, right? That's the thing that so many developers used to say. You see that mountain? You can go there. Well, in this case, like, yeah, of course I can go there. I can go to that mountain, and it's, like, super cool because there's usually, like, a cool thing on the top of the mountain, or I can find a cool pathway up there. Maybe there's a weapon. There's a sword and a stone. Maybe there's a monster. Maybe there's a shrine. There's all kinds of shit that I can find, which is just so great. Um, this game is... Uh, like I said, tone-wise, there's that strange little sense of melancholy, right? But I think it's also just a, an incredibly gorgeous game, uh, which I really, really enjoy. So, after we do the scanning, and it gives me a little bit of information, I'm just going to... I'm going to uh, relax, and then I'm going to see what it's like to play Zelda inside my bed. Um... Although I will say this for the Switch. This is basically the only game on it that's worth playing right now. I've played 1-2 Switch. It's not that exciting. Um, I don't know what else there is. There's Shovel Knight. If you're really into Shovel Knight, I feel like this would be a good platform to get a Shovel Knight on. Um, but by now, if you are into Shovel Knight, the chances are that you have Shovel Knight, which means that you can probably get it on this console um, for free. I forget what the deal is. They have a really fancy, uh, annoyingly obtuse way of taking care of it. But, you know... I feel like those would be the things uh, that you would be in in it for for now. Mario Kart on this would be very, very good once you have a lot of people who are used to playing on the Joy-Cons. I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff. So let's, at the very least, go back here again and save. And then I am actually going to say goodnight. Thank you guys very much for enjoying this kind of first uh, session into Zelda. I'm going to be playing a lot on my own time. I have to do a lot of stuff this weekend. I have a review of another game that's coming on Friday is the plan, although I do hope to have a video on Zelda for some time on Monday or Tuesday as well. We'll do a critical video, so I hope you enjoy those, and I will see you around. Have a wonderful day. Bye!